Here's a message for our federal government. We the people are done. We the people are tired of you making poor decisions on our behalf in Washington that causes us to struggle each and every day. We the people are tired of paying our federal taxes so that you can take our money and commit crimes by giving it to illegal immigrants who have no rights in this country. We the people are tired of you not paying attention to us and because of that, we the people will take back our country. We the people are frustrated that you are overspending, that you are sending money to fund wars in other country that we don't approve of. We are tired of you taking our money and using it against us. I urge each and every American citizen to stand up and not pay your federal taxes this year. Because the government's going to continue to print money whether you pay them or not. So that makes it irrelevant if we pay or not. Right? They're going to do whatever they want to do. But you have a right to take care of your family. You go to work so that you can provide for your family. Not so that you can pay the federal government to commit crimes or to make life difficult for each and every one of us. Stand up. Do what's best for you and your family because believe it or not, there is something brewing on the horizon and we the people need to be prepared. We the people have had enough. And we the people need to stand up and be strong and take control of what belongs to us. All right, Shalom to the elect of Israel. Started with the 144,000 elect men, 12,000 from each tribe, which consists of the so called blacks so-called Hispanics, so-called Native American Indians, and you Israelite foreigners. Hebrew Israelites who are scattered among all other nations, looking like the other nations and speaking their tongues. Shalom to all of you. Before we get started with this lesson, let's face the East and let's give the much do all phrases, honor and glory to Yahawa Bahashum Yahawashai Bahashum Racha Kwadash Koholoim La Yahawa Bahashum Yahawashai Bahashum Racha Kwadash Double honor to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone and much due respect to you, sincere Akim that's laboring in the works. And Shalom to you, believers, to the Akim Wa Akwa which will be you brothers and few amount of sincere sisters who do subscribe to this truth. I the one Ratsaza, Lord willing, that this lesson be edifying, plain upon the tables and straight to the point. I'm your brother Manazar, representing Warriors for Yahweh Shai, Pasadena, Texas branch. It's going to be a response to this video from the whole four leg three. The link is in the description box. When the wicked bearer rule, the people mourn. And if you can see it through the spirit, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakak Wadash, right? That a civil war is going to happen at some point. The people is going to rise up against their leaders. Their legitimate government, I, I guess you can say. Those supposed to be in power, right? Which is going to lead to civil war. Different groups of people struggling for power. Okay? Um, let's get that right quick. Um, the book of Proverbs, very quick. It's going to be a short lesson. I don't want to write to that. There's two scriptures that come to mind. 
29 and 2. Warnings and instructions. All right. So for an example, right? The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 2 in the KJV. When the righteous are in authority, right? When the Israelite men are in authority, right? Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, King David, and the men that represents the house of David, the 144,000 elect men, right? The people rejoice. So obviously we're not in rulership. The chosen people are not in rulership because of what? For an example, but when the wicked beareth rule the people more, do you not see everything's in the state of mourning? People, all nations, even the Edomites, so-called white people, are also mourning. And their leaders, the wicked elites, are in rulership. Even they're in a state of mourning. All right. But in the kingdom of heaven, when the righteous are finally in authority, everyone is going to rejoice. Okay. Except for the, the Edomites. The Edomites in the kingdom of heaven is going to be their pure hell. All right. But at some point, even the heathens are going to see how that when when the sons of Yahweh Bashmi Shah are in rulership, you know, it's, it's better. Then when Esau Edom, so-called white man, was in rulership. All right, so the point I want to get out of this uh, verse is that when the wicked bear rules, the people mourn. All right, so that's how you know who's in rulership and who's not. Who's in rulership is the wicked. Job chapter 9, verse 24, that the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, just paraphrasing, the wicked elites of the society. Right, your, Illumin your Illuminati's, um, the wicked elites. They also, they also go by like the banking family, the Rothschild, right? The little hat people that's claiming to be us over in our homeland in Israel, right? Everything is mourning. The sea creatures are mourning. The fowls of the air, right? The birds, the creeping things, the insects, the beasts of the field, right? The planet itself. Is in a state of mourning. Everything is suffering because of the so-called white people, uh, leaders in rulership, right? The wicked elites. Um, and eventually, you know, people are going to get fed up, and they're going to rise up against their uh, the kings and princes. But let's get this in the uh, Good News translation from the Bible Gateway, right? Quick. The Good News translation is pretty good. Um, Book of Proverbs 29 and 2 in the Good News Translation. All right. Show me a righteous ruler, and I will show you a happy people. You gotta be a damn lie. A damn lie to tell me that people are happy. No, hell no, everything people are not happy. So that should give you. An indicator of like, okay, who who's in rulership right now? Hmm. Think about it. Show me a righteous ruler and I will show you a happy people. Show me a wicked ruler and I will show you a miserable people. People are here in this eon, this world, this age are miserable. Because of who's the rulership, the wicked elites. All right. Um, so we did mention how eventually it's going to lead to sedition among men, right? You heard the the the, the elderly man in the video, right? In that video, um, let's see, second Ezra's, um, fifteen. Let's see. This whole chapter is fire. But I want to get straight to the point. <laughs> I'll start at verse 14 down to 19. But the point is in verse 16. All right. But uh, second Edris chapter 15 verse 14 in the Apocrypha KJV. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right, destruction to the people of this world. 
those who dwell in it, the, the inhabitants, right? Uh, the mundanes, I guess you can say, right? Because the elect are not from here. All right, scripture says how the elect, right? Uh, we say that our for our conversation is written in heaven. It's paraphrasing. Conversation goes into citizenship. Um, let's see, verse fifteen. For the sore and dare the draw, for the sore and dare destruction drive nigh. Right, the war that's going to destroy a lot of people is very close by. World War Three, Civil War, right. And one people shall stand up and fight against another. Think of civil war for an example, right? And swords in their hands. Modern day swords today, think of like your firearms. Alright. Shit, don't be surprised that when the when the ammunition even goes out because of the famine. Right? When you go into that scripture in second Edges chapter six, verse twenty two, if I'm not mistaken. And suddenly shall the sown places appear in sown, and the full storehouses shall be found empty. Just paraphrasing. The storehouses, when you go into similar terms, you get armory. So don't be surprised that, you know, it's going to be looking like a modern day dark ages out here. People fight each other with homemade, homemade machetes, homemade melee weapons, katanas, you know, spears and, and etc. All right, but but mainly uh, you think of the the guns, right? Um, verse sixteen: For there shall be sedition among men, right? Sedition is going to be rioting among men, disobedience among men, resistance among men, um, disobedience among men. For there shall be sedition among men. Like sedition is going to that. Uh, let's see. You want to get some similar terms? Well, con conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority over state of monarch. Let's see. You got riot, rebellion. Let's see. Troublemaking. Uh, insurrection. Right, insurrection goes into a violent uprising against the authority of monarch. Uh, rioting is going to be rioting as well. To the far right, you get silver disorder, disobedience, resistance. Okay, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings or princes. Right, they shall not regard. Regard, consider, or think of someone or something in a in a specific way. So the one, the time is going to come where the people are not going to take into consideration or think of the government, the cops of being their leaders. They're not going to care about who's in power. I, I, I no, that's the best way I could think of. People. Are not going to think uh, care about who's in power. They're not going to care about who's the president, who's the vice president, who's the mayor, who's the governor. Even towards police officers, people are not going to care about police officers, and it's going to get so bad for the princes, right? The princes think of uh, like your law enforcement officers, your sheriffs, your deputies, police officers. It's going to get so bad towards them that even they. Are no longer going to want to be cops. Even they're going to rise up against their kings and other princes, and they all. And the only thing they're going to th be thinking about is uh, theirs and their family. They're not going to care about playing cop anymore. They don't. They're not going to care about protecting people. No, that's how bad it's about to get out here. Don't that sedition among men. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They. They, right, the people, right, shall not regard their kings or princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. People are going to take matters into their own hands now. People are going to want to do what they think is best for them and for the people. 
Not caring about what the government thinks anymore. What law enforcement thinks. All right. Which is going to lead to all hell breaking loose. The desire to travel to another city. All right. Uh, the free access. The, that's what I was trying to get at. The free access to travel to cities are not going to be the way how it is right now. Right now, you can just get up and go. But we're still, you're not going to be able to do that. Because of the amount of chaos that's out here in these city streets. Checkpoints. Different bridges are probably no longer working. Either because they cut them off or it's physically damaged, it's destroyed. All right. A man shall desire to go to the city and shall not be able. Why is that? For an example. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Right. People are going to desire to travel, but not are not going to be able to. Right. It's just throwing out some possible examples. You know, these a lot of bridges are going to be destroyed or or clotted up with. Vehicles not working anymore. Um, checkpoints here and there. Um, and just the, the amount of chaos outside. Outside looking like a war zone. People are going to be afraid. Right? People are not going to want to to travel anymore. People are not going to want to gather abroad anymore because of the destruction that they see outside. The amount of chaos and calamity. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. Why is that? Because men are going to invade one another. Houses are going to be on fire, blown up, destroyed because of the wars, the civil war. Right? For an example. And men shall be afraid. How much more you women? Who is the weaker vessel? Alright. Verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Neighbor also goes into brother. Right, your next door neighbor, Billy, John, Carlos, Jesus, John, Nelson, Ray Ray. <laughs> right, ain't gonna have no pity upon each other, man. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor, upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Think of the firearms, think of you know, people. Like these militant type groups, proud boys, pulling up to people's houses with a mounted 50 cal on their trucks, releasing a whole drum, a whole, you know, uh, like a whole drum upon a house, like the movie, uh, the book of Eli, that scenes where Eli and that chick was in the house with those two elderly Edomite looking couple. They were cannibals, and the house got uh, destroyed by by them by, by some heavy firearms, man. Okay, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil you their goods, spoil you, right? Rob, take and such time of war, who's a main spoil you? In such times of war, women, a lot of you women. Are going to be spoils. You're going to be taken. People, men, other men's wives are going to be taken. And spoil their goods. Whatever is their resource. Whatever people desire. Food, water, medicine, strong drinks, clothes, jewels. Even your woman. Alright. And because we come into a time like never before. Expect dudes wanting to take other men as spoil you. And do all kinds of shit to them. Because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation. So for hunger because of the famine and for great sufferings. All right. So, yeah, the time is going to come where the people are not going to care anymore. Right. Well, the time of this particular vision. Right. is going to be manifest in, in, the, in world world time. And you will see people no longer caring about who's in power, who's supposed to be the leaders. They're going to start taking matters into their own actions. All right. So, Abu Rasa Zat the was edifying, playing upon the tables. We're going to close out by giving a much ado, all phrases, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashum, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechakwadash, Koloim La, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechakwadash. 
double honor to the apostles and elders and bishops of great millstone. Much due respect to you, sincere Akim, that's laboring the works. Shalom to you, believers, to the Akim wa Akwa, which be your brothers and few of my sincere sisters who do subscribe to the truth. Shalom. Here's a message for our federal government. We the people are done. We the people are tired of you making poor decisions on our behalf in Washington that causes us to struggle each and every day. We the people are tired of paying our federal taxes so that you can take our money and commit crimes by giving it to illegal immigrants who have no rights in this country. We the people are tired of you not paying attention to us and because of that, we the people will take back our country. We the people are frustrated that you are overspending, that you are sending money to fund wars in other country that we don't approve of. We are tired of you taking our money and using it against us. I urge each and every American citizen to stand up and not pay your federal taxes this year. Because the government's going to continue to print money whether you pay them or not. So that makes it irrelevant if we pay or not. Right? They're going to do whatever they want to do. But you have a right to take care of your family. You go to work so that you can provide for your family, not so that you can pay the federal government to commit crimes or to make life difficult for each and every one of us. Stand up. Do what's best for you and your family, because believe it or not, there is something brewing on the horizon and we the people need to be prepared. We the people have had enough. And we the people need to stand up and be strong and take control of what belongs to us.